Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of this week's Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 update video. So after talking about Agnea and Norvis in the last video, we're now going to move up a little bit higher and go into Norvis orbit, where there's been some, um, some work has gone on with building up the train system as you can see here. So um, it's still a little bit um, early days with this, we haven't got a full train system up and running yet, but we've got a little bit placed down with which Tristan's been doing by dropping in roboports and um, on, on their little islands of space scaffolding and then uh, link, linking them together like this. And so we've got a little bit of coverage and that started with the start of the building process. Now this is going to be similar to my my setup in the uh, in the 0.5 run, where we're going to have probably going to end up with a sort of a spine running up the middle, with areas running off either side for each of the different sciences. So here, for example, we've got the energy science is going to go in here. It's planned, so there's an icon to input there, just so we can have an idea of how things are intended to go. Then we're going to have material down here and astro up here. Uh, bio will go off somewhere else, maybe up here. And there's an area down here for miscellaneous fishy stuff. Um, so that's going to be things like making the um, making the thermofluids and making the uh, the memory cards and making all those sort of things that you're going to need in lots and lots of different places. So you don't want to be doing each one on site, but you, but you want to have it on the train system. So you need you need to have an area like this where you can be doing these extra miscellaneous things. Now, having a bit, of, having a bit of a look at this, I'm, <clears throat> I'm a little bit uncertain about this design because there's not very much room left at the end here for the for the bus to continue on and have more, more stuff being built. Now, granted, a lot of the a lot of the buildings are the, that are being made at the moment. So things like here, we've got the chemical plant or whatever it's called, the biochem facility, biochem facility, radiators, computers, um, zappy zappy plasma generators coolers, radiation facility lasers and so on, all the way up here. These are all being made off this sort of mini bus that's coming off the main bus here, running up this way. So there's a pretty good chance that a lot of the buildings we're going to need will fit into this system. However, there's also a chance that there's going to be a few other random things here and there that don't, that need extra stuff and just need to be done completely differently. And so I'm a little bit concerned that this is not going to be enough space for that. Now, granted, we, do, we are going to gain a bit of extra space here. So, yeah, everything from about here to about here can be removed because that's just there to create energy science one. So we don't really need any of this in this area. We could, we, we'll, we're could we going to get rid of that, and that's going to be put into the, the space down here and then expanded for energy two, energy three, energy four, and so on. Um, but that's not that much space, really. Now, that said, we, could, we may also then end up removing some more of the stuff. So over here, we've got the um, uh, productivity data, what's these called? Optimization tech card. So these might be removed as well, and that we should take this one out as well. Uh, the sludge and bio sludge and things may be moved off to a separate recycling area somewhere else. So again, this this area might go. Um, we'll have a separate area doing memory cards, so those will go. And maybe, doing, maybe we'll do these sciences somewhere else. So as you can see what I'm getting at. A lot of this stuff may end up being removed, so this might actually be plenty of space. But I am aware that there are going to be a lot of different machines that we're going to need at various different points later on in the game. And I don't know whether this tower is going to be a realistic way of doing it, especially when we get onto things like the later tiers of supercomputers, which will all want to be, well, they'll probably want their own tower, because then we can have tier one computers into tier two, three, to four. And they're going to have all kinds of weird and strange ingredients being brought in as well. So. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, we, what we could what we could do is, is reckon on this being a first bus that has the basics on it, and then if we run out of space here, then it could potentially. It, I was going to say it could loop upwards. There's not really going to be space for it to do that because it's quite wide. But it might be able to then. We might be able to then say, well, actually, we'll take a load of the stuff that's need that needs a certain set of ingredients off somewhere else and put that in its own area. Just completely some, somewhere completely different, um, and we might find that this sort of thing is actually sufficient for most of what we want to produce. I'm honestly not sure, which is why I've been saying this with lots and lots of sort of caveaty words in there. Um, but at the, but yeah, I, I am I'm a little bit concerned that we haven't got a huge amount of extra space here. We'll see how that goes though. And also in, in other news up in Norbit, Tristan has put in a, a copper chopping machine. So previously you'll remember that we started bringing up the um, iron and steel in ingot forms. There's a load of iron ingots in here that are brought out on this belt, put into this machine, chopped into iron plates, then get passed around here and go into here. Same with steel up here, where the steel all goes into this warehouse, gets chopped up, steel plates go into here. And now, because we've um, because we've got enough vulcanite being shipped over to Norvis so we can start doing pyroflux smelting of copper as well, that means we've got loads of copper ingots available. And so as I've said before, they pack down much more neatly, you get a lot more copper per, per stack if you transport it as, as ingots rather than as plates. 
and that means it's a lot more you can bring it it's, it's a lot more efficient when you're putting stuff into the rocket so here we have the uh, the rocket landing pad we'll unload the uh, the steel and copper plates over here they'll get passed over into the appropriate warehouse and then we can chop them up as, as required and all of the inserters along here have um, have filters set up on them so if there's when there's less than 4,000 steel for example this one will run when there's less than 1,000 copper this one will run and the idea is that that'll, that'll keep enough of the uh, those materials in each of one of these warehouses so for example up here we've got we've got a, a healthy amount of steel but not a ridiculous amount of it so we don't have a completely full warehouse but when we need steel it can be just shipped straight out down this belt here and be used up by whatever needs it and as that drops we'll get another splurge of steel coming through here going into here to fill it back up again so there's always going to be about a thousand steel in there uh, four thousand steel in there at the moment it's 4100 but that's on this sort of scale that is close enough to be it being an about that, that i'm happy with it um, i did notice when i was poking around here earlier so we need to we need to keep an eye on these warehouses and make sure they don't completely fill up because if this if the one at the top fills up completely for whatever reason then we're not going to be able to flow the stuff through from here so because everything gets passed out from this um from this landing pad into this warehouse uh, well nearly everything and then it sort of trickles down here until it gets to the right place you need to make sure that none of your warehouses are full and when i was looking earlier i realized that was it this one yes this one is completely full and um, that's a little bit unfortunate um however the, the problem it turns out is these um is these cargo rocket sections and i think this is actually my fault because i had a little bit of a look into that to try and work out what was going on um, and it looks like we have a machine here that I think at one point was supposed to be turning um, stacked rocket sections back into single rocket sections to build a rocket. But then there's been some problems in here. And actually, this what, what should actually be happening here is this should be making stacked rocket sections. Uh, and it should be doing it until there's as long as there are more than 100 of them uh, Yeah, in here, not in here. So we, I'm going to need to rewire this like... So hook it up to this one and then and then flip that round like that. And then that'll start running and we can then have that dump into the into the rocket over here, which currently is basically full of scrap. But there's loads and loads of um, rocket sections in here, more than we need. So those should be tidied up as well. In fact, let's, let's sort that. There we, uh, there we go. So we can we can see now this is this is now allowing various things to be passed through that there were there were problems with before. So we've got the copper coming in, flowing flowing around as it should be, rather than having a sort of a general jam of things not just not behaving themselves. And we're also able to, to chug through a few of these rocket sections, pack them up and put them into this rocket to be ready to send, be sent back to Norvis once we have enough scrap. Now, sending scrap back to Norvis is a terrible idea and we'll want to start recycling that on site quite soon but at the moment we haven't set up the facilities for that so we're just putting it into this rocket if we get to a point where we have the recycling facility set up before this rocket goes then yeah sure we can just unload the scrap back out of it and it can just gradually fill up with uh, rocket control modules but until then we need to do something slightly different that um is also a nonsense uh maybe there were some stacked rocket sections in here at some point for some reason or another and this one needs to be programmed to yeah do that basically so i should be able to do that and that won't insert there we go so now we can yeah we can use these to build, automatically build up the rocket and we've got quite a few of these in here we possibly should also have one of these set to load the uh, capsules in if we ever have more than uh, more than 10 of them say it, because we'll also want to ship any spares of those back down to Norvis. but that's that's another complication which i'm not going to do in the middle of a video we'll leave that one up to tristan to solve when he because he's, he seems to be the person who's playing with norbert at the moment <laughs> The other thing he's done up here is been basically just generally keeping an eye on the science processing. So up here at the moment we have, as you can see, we, we, we are doing a we're doing a mining productivity research, and that uses the optimization tech cards. And because we seem to have a reasonable amount of imasite around at the moment, we've been doing these sort of researches. For some reason, it takes 4,756 uh, cards to do the research. I don't know where that number came from. Maybe there was a, um, a percentage-based uh, research productivity improvement that we did a little while ago, because that seems like a very strange number. Um, but why it would do it to the why it would reduce the number of science packs needed rather than reducing rather than giving us a productivity boost I don't know are they all no lots of the other ones aren't funny numbers so it must just be that this one is a weird funny number for some reason and I have no idea why um, probably it's probably been mathematically derived from some some formula that's how these sorts of things usually happen but we're doing this because at the moment we have as you can see here we have loads and loads of the productivity research cards along here loads and loads and loads of them um, but we don't have very many of the energy science research because we seem to be we don't seem to be making them as fast as we're using them they are they're trickling in nicely over here but 
for some reason, maybe maybe it's. I, I can't remember the, whether I thought the numbers through for this or whether I just said, well, this is going to be a bootstrap, so I'll just make it as quickly and easily as possible. Um, it could just it could be that this system here is not able to produce the. Um, produce the science packs as quickly as we would like. There does seem to be a shortage, shortage of significant data because there's a shortage of insights because uh, it, it, it's chugging away gradually. So yeah, this system here in general appears to be insufficient. Um, I think it's probably this step here. So when we redesign it and rebuild it and put it in over here, we'll actually do the maths and make sure we balance it up properly so that it can run nicely and we have all the science packs we need. So that's everything I want to talk to you about regarding Norvis, or Norbit rather. So let's move a little bit further out though. So from Norvis or Norvis orbit rather, we're going to head a little bit further out of the, along the solar system to the planet of Kothar. And you'll remember this one as the one that Mike has been on and pounding his head against the, uh, the Iridium problem. So Iridium, as you can, as we'll remind ourselves from this handy diagram up here, uh, it comes in a number of stages. Firstly, you pull up the, um, the core fragments out of the ground like this. You then pass them over to be crushed, uh, and you get actual uh, iridia, ir iridite coming out there, which can be then passed up around here, and then go into all of these machines over here, which will crush it again. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. When it does work, it can then be passed over into the warehouses here, and then it can be passed on over this way. And um, and we've got the we've got so we've now got the crushed iridite over here. That again then gets fed into a chemical plant with all kinds of nonsense like uh, nitric acid, hydrogen chloride, cation beads, and that's the, that, that stuff itself. And this is the step that uh, Mike has been working on for the last two weeks, I think. And he's very, very happy because he's finally managed to get that working. As you can see on the output belt here, there's actually some imosite powder on here. Uh, and that's going on down the disposal chute here, having the, the bits that need to be recycled filtered out of it, and then going off this way and into a warehouse. So he's he's very excited about this. I can tell because in his in his notes from the last stream, he's put it in block capitals with multiple exclamation marks, which, as we all know from practice, is a sign of a dise diseased mind. But you know that that does sound about right. <laughs> um, and the reason this has been so much of an effort is because it's because of the sheer number of input th things that go into it. This is this is a recipe with four different inputs, uh, one of which is the one coming from the uh, the previous crushing stage. But then he needed to make, he needs to make these cation beads, which he'd done. He needed to make massive quantities of hydrogen chloride, which takes up all of his sand. Fortunately for uh, Mike, he has a lot of um, stone on this planet, including this mine here, um, uh, which allows him to use all of the belts in the world. This is why I can never find any when I need them, um, and. And if we look around, there's, there's 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 more here, more ridiculously long belt runs here. The, 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 the sheer number of belts Mike has used in in, in this system is, is is astonishing, and basically goes on to explain why I can never find any when I need them. But yes, anyway, this planet has decent supplies of stone, so he's able to pull that through, crush it down into sand here in order to make the um in order to make the hydrogen chloride over here. But the extra thing he's done recently, which is um is another sort of tick, uh, well he stopped flaring off the mineral water and instead that's now being brought in at a ridiculous rate by delivery cannon from Norvis in barrels, which is a horrible, horrible way to do it. But to be honest, I don't think there's any alternative. There's one coming in now, so that's got t ten barrels of um of of um uh, mineral water in, so dropping in like this. Uh, they, they they get drained out into this tank. He's keeping this at about ten thousand, which is a number, so sure, and then he's filling this warehouse up with all the empty barrels. Uh, these will need to be compacted down into steel, and goodness knows what will be done with it. Maybe just feed it onto this belt over here, and we can turn it all into um, uh, uh, low density structures and heat shield tiles. I don't know, but yeah, he's going to have a lot of steel to deal with at some point. Um, so that's that's one of the things you need. He also needs uh, rare metals. Uh, he seems to have a reasonable supply of that at the moment. So this seems to be this seems to be going okay. Um, although that's gone down a bit since I last glanced at it, because then up here, this 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 is the uh, the nitric acid stage, and you'll have seen this before from on uh, Taishakuten when I was messing around with uh, the the imosite production. But it also turns out you need it for iridium as well. So over here we have a process where he's, he's bringing in water, it's being electrolyzed into hydrogen and oxygen, you blow off the hydrogen into the atmosphere, you pull some nitrogen out of the atmosphere as well, pump all of that into a, into a chemical plant to make some ammonia, which you can then put into another chemical plant with the mineral water and the rare metals that I mentioned earlier in order to make the nitric acid. I feel like I briefly need to point out the, uh, how lovely the colours are here with the purple steam coming out of this chemical plant and the pink one coming out of here. Looks, looks, looks really nice. Um, it's a bit of a distraction, but it is pretty. So that, that nitric acid is then being passed around all the way up this long, 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 long length of piping, all the way across the top here, uh, 
wibbled around here a little bit, and then going down into the into the processing area over here, where we can finally make the uh, iridium powder. That's being shoved into a into, into a couple of warehouses over here, where he stored. 30,000 of it and then it's full and then it's being passed up here into the next step and this is iridium blast cake uh, which ba basically means you need to cook the uh, the iridium powder in one well, no, of you centrifuge apparently the iridium powder uh, with some uh, energized what's, what's it called the the the, the 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 slightly the hotter the spicy vulcanite enriched vulcanite there we go so you have the enriched vulcanite down here you spin those two together that makes the blast cake and then that goes off into a warehouse and is then basically ignored <laughs> because this is as far as he's got so far which is i mean that's that's kind of fair enough because it's 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 been a big job up to this point conveniently for mike uh, he hasn't had to go off and find the um the the enriched vulcanite himself or the normal vulcanite i've been shipping that over to him by delivery cannon so it all drops in here and then goes as appropriate out into the into the it all gets dumped apparently all gets dumped straight into this warehouse and then gets passed up the um the belts into this one if, if necessary and, and round and so on um he's got some train stations here i'm they appear to be for unloading so i'm not quite sure what the uh, what the plan is with those but maybe it's if he ever finds a source of iridium of a vulcanite on this planet which i'm pretty sure is not going to happen or it may just be future proofing because at some point down the line we may find that all this stuff in fact we will find that all this stuff will be brought in by spaceship and a spaceship won't can't land in quite the same area as a delivery cannon capsule so perhaps we'll uh, this is this is future proofing for when later later on sometime in the future there'll be a spaceship landing system over here on, on the train network and then the trains will bring it over to here where it's actually needed maybe maybe that's what maybe that's what he's planning for maybe i'm putting words into ideas into his head i don't know but that's sort of that's why i would assume there are stations there at this point He's also been a little bit snarky about um, we're having to wait an, et uh, an eternity for um, spicy and block vulcanite to arrive. I think that's a little bit cheeky because, yeah, okay, there's a little bit of a wait for the vulcanite to start coming in because I had to build the factory up. But the um, the spicy stuff literally arrived as soon as he said he wanted it. I, I had a delivery cannon that had been idle for ages and I just needed to turn on. So you're a cheeky sod, but then we already know that. He's realised that he needs sand in order to make the uh, the, nit the hydrogen chloride over here, so he stopped shipping that. He stopped putting that into a rocket to send over to Tristan. There was a ludicrously long belt that went from up here somewhere to down to to this rocket silo um, in order to do that, but he's removed that now because he's realised his need is greater than Tristan's, or at least is significantly more local and therefore higher up in the monkey sphere priority. Um, on the my, my system, on the other hand, produces a lot more sand than I could possibly need, so I'm going to carry on shipping that over to Tristan because when I'm making vulcanite, I don't uh, that doesn't require sand. I did notice when I was poking around this uh, this base earlier. Well, first, firstly, we've got these weird um, uh, loaders going on here, so let's let's stop that. Just feed it straight back out into here. We'll do the same here. That's been fed that way. That's been fed that way. Let's try and put everything into. In, in, into one one place and just keep it a little bit more sensible and to get an idea of how, how we're doing with the Iridium. So I did notice this, this one's emptying very very quickly as you'd expect from me turning those uh, loaders around um, but I did notice that this was was once I'd finished doing that was gradually going downward. At the moment the system is not bringing in enough Iridium at this end to keep to satisfy the, the machinery over here. Now this uh, no, you can see if we now look at this one you can see there's 393 stacks 392 it's going down it's going down slowly and this is simply because there isn't enough input on this side so at the moment mike has got one uh pul one mine uh, core mining drill here digging away sending stuff in over here to be pulverized he's also got a station and that's because he's put in a second mining drill over here which is linked up to his rail network over there down here and so a train will presumably come over at some point and pick up the uh the iridium from here although there's 20,000 in here so i imagine he just hasn't made the train yet so having a second drill will mean this is going to get 1.4 times the amount of iridium being dug up um, because of the, 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 way these, the way these things uh, affect each other. And that's going to be a bit of a help. It's going to give them a bit more of a boost. It's going to have, mean a bit more flowing through here and maybe the system will then be able to keep up. Um, what I suspect is going to happen is if we get a lot more iridium uh, core flow, uh, chunks flowing, no, iridium ore flowing in here, these machines are very quickly going to be uh, th these machines are going to very very quickly fill this up and this this area here is going to be the uh, the the bit that struggles that struggles to keep up I think um, but we'll see how we'll see how it goes maybe some better belts and things like that would help because there are a lot of machines here that just aren't running at the moment so yeah there's some potential for that I also note there's a bit of a sort of there's a mess of belts to be quite to be brutally frank about it going on here with the the cation beads and everything else um so he's got one he's got a warehouse up here that's being kept at about 200 uh, by the belt flows down here from where they're made and loading them in here that then feeds them out down here where they are then passed through all these machines and then there are other belts that bring them all the way back up again no matter where they come from 
um, bring them all the way back up to this warehouse, and then to, in order, then or in order to feed them back out again. It seems a little, a little bit unwieldy, but I guess it's a. Uh, it, 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 it's working, so I, I'm not going to be too rude about it, but it does feel a little bit unwieldy. Also, this, this, these, these cation beads are also being used over here for, the, uh, for purifying some of the water. So one of the side products of this system that makes it even more frustrating is that he produces this dirty iridium water as, an, as, a, as a byproduct of the, um, of, the, of the iridium powder making. So not only does it kick out three of its, two of its input ingredients and, uh, and the powder, that he actually wants. It also kicks out this uh, iridium, uh, sorry, dirty iridium water that he doesn't particularly want. So, but that can then be brought up here. It can be filtered in the presence of these uh, cation beads. So it's another use for them. And then that will spit out. Sometimes it'll give you your cation beads back. What's it? Sixty percent of the time, it's a bit naff. Um, it gives you back most of the water. Gives you back a chance of stone, a chance of some crushed iridite. So, basically, all of these things are just there to make it a little bit more complicated to give Mike more and more and more byproducts to have to think about in putting the process together. But one of the things he did have to worry about was was water balance. So, previous because there are quite a few different recipes on this planet that use water or produce water in various different ways. So down, 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 down. Somewhere down here, he's got his um. No, nope, not here. Oh, all the way over here. Here we go. He's got his iron processing, and that takes in water it, in in the enrichment step and gives out dirty water. And that dirty water needs to be cleaned. So, I mean, has he got has he got a pipe of doom going from here all the way up to the cleaning facilities? Yes, he has. This goes all the way up here to over here where he's cleaning that out. But then he needs to make sure that the because this outputs some of that water. Uh, from here, in fact, he needs to then make sure that that is organised and he doesn't get too much of it. So he's got, you then end up with this sort of system of of, um, of of ducts and things carrying water around and make sure everything is a closed loop and you aren't and you don't have any loops where water is being created but not used because that can cause everything to jam up. So this is going to be a bit of a pain to put together, I imagine, but it seems to be done and seems to be working. Where did this go? This Oh, this, this, this is for growing the power. Okay, so there's yeah, there's got lots of ducts running around carrying the power. Some of them are linked into in, in all kinds of confusing ways. But basically, the, the 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 moral of all of this is that you need to make sure that you're not bringing more water into your system than you are outputting from it, because that will give you problems. The final step, I believe, of the um, of the part of the iridium creation is is dealing with the this blast cake that I was talking about before. And one of the things that needs is pyroflux. And I believe that's going. To, that's why there's these two belts coming over here to carry the vulcanite from the drop-off point over here. And two red belts is massive overkill, but never mind that. Uh, bring, going to bring it over here. I think he's going to need to bring sand up, which is going to be another extension of all of these ridiculous belts over here, I guess. So there's got plenty of these. And then he's going to need to feed another another belt of sand all the way up here to make the pyroflux. And then that can at some point then deal with the uh, the iridium blast cake and cook it down into the actual ingots that we that we need. And once we've got those, that's going to be quite useful because I mean, there's there's lots of things we can do with iridium, uh, which is why we sent Mike out here to try and get some. The most obvious thing is material science. So all the material science packs they require iridium in the same way that the um, the energy science requires holmium. It's one of the ingredients for what most of the data you're getting in from it, and for the science packs themselves. Or at least it was in 0.5. I imagine it's going to be the same. The other thing we can start doing potentially is using the iridium recipe for making delivery cannons. So if we look in here, uh, or delivery cannon capsule, sorry. We can look at capsule, here we go, it's this one. Uh, and so you've got the choice, you've got the recipe we're doing at the moment, which uses copper cable, low density structures, explosives and heat shielding. And it's a massive faff just to get all of those things together and build it all up from, yeah, it's, just, it's a pain. Alternatively, flick over to the other one, explosives and iridium simple very very simple as long as well comparatively anyway as long as you can get the iridium in i mean granted to make the explosives you're going to need coal and sulfur and water so you're going to need oil coal and water but most planets have will have those um and so just having a, a, a dribble of iridium coming in will make make will, will allow us to make these delivery cannons a lot more easily now on the other hand the system we've got at the moment allows us to make lots and lots of allows us to use up the remaining resources from the core chunks so on places with a sort of relatively low demand, so somewhere like uh, Tristan's Holmium planet, it might be quite good to keep the system running just off the um, off, off the off the core chunks. But on the Vulcanite planets, like the the one I've been working on, where we have, where we have needs for massive massive quantities of Vulcanite, 
we're making lots and lots of delivery cannons from ingredients that have been shipped in by by delivery cannon and so if we can do that just from iridium and explosives that's going to make things much much cleaner and more efficient and just and 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 reduce the number of delivery cannons we're lobbing around the solar system which or delivery cannon capsules rather we're lobbing around the solar system which I feel like it's a big improvement just in the sort of the, the resources that are used up by, by by that process. There's also an alternative heat shield tile recipe. Um, so instead of using sulfur and eight sulfur, twenty stone tablet and two steel to make one, in order to make one you'll need half a sulfur, two stone tablets, and half an iridium plate. Now if we switch over to the iridium recipe for making delivery cannon capsules, then we're not going to need anything like as much um, heat shield. Uh, to heat, as many heat shield tiles being produced in general however there's still going to be a lot of stuff particularly a lot of the space construction that does use them and so being able to save on significant amounts of um, fairly significant amounts of sulfur and quite a lot of stone is potentially worthwhile those aren't particularly expensive ingredients as things go but you know it, it it's, it's a slight improvement, especially if we ever start building any of these in space, because it's going to, it will massively reduce the logistics cost of getting all of those things into place. Uh, the rest of it is deconstruction by the looks of it, yeah. We're also going to start using iridium in fairly significant quantities for building a lot of the spaceship parts and things like that in, in the future once we get to that stage. And I imagine there's going to be other sort of structural stuff stuff that it gets used for so i think it's going to we're going to have some quite significant needs for it in the future and it's going to be used in a lot of exciting places so yeah we just need mike to get on with it and, and, and start producing it um and he's getting pretty close there is as i say i believe this is just one more step but i'm not actually looking at the diagram at the moment so i'm going to have to just sort of guess a little bit, a bit about that so that is that is oh no it's not quite not quite everything on Kothar because I have noted I I'll mention again that we seem to be getting minor attacks on the uh, on the walls out here. There's been a bit of nibbling on some of them, um, like this one here. Uh, but again, once again, they're still at like 90 something percent health. So I as basically as long as Mike flits around every 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 week with uh, with a load of repair packs and some bots, then he'll be able to fix all of this up and it should be fine. I noticed he's put in some um, gun turrets with uh, uranium ammo to to provide the lasers with some backup as well in, in the in the areas that get investigated so that's that's quite a good well one of the areas that got investigated that seems like quite a good idea the system seems quite capable of keeping up though um, even if there is a nest fairly close by Mike has also been uh, going out and dealing with the, uh, the the biters to an extent and this will look very familiar to you after yesterday's episode although in a slightly smaller scale because he's, yes he's been going out and blowing them up with nukes and this just shows how um, how much the nukes have been nerfed from what I what the way I sort of expect them to be from having played before they've not even killed these worms around here whereas I'm sure when I played Every time I've played before, dropping a nuke basically means you kill everything on the screen. There's a massive explosion, fills the screen, takes out every, and kills everything on it. Um, it seems in... I don't know whether this is a space exploration or a Crastorio or even a, a, a newer versions of um, Factorio update, but they do seem to have been massively, massively weakened compared to what I'm used to. Still, he's been going out there doing some doing some blowing up. He's left the worms behind because, to be honest, they're not all that dangerous. And <clears throat> and once he's got some iridium up and available, then he's going to be able to start making uh, railgun rounds again, and maybe and more railguns for the rest of us. And so that'll allow us to have much better, much more effective firepower. Because it it turns out that against certainly against the uh, the, the the worms and to an extent against the spawners as well, uh, the the, the railgun is actually more effective than the nukes are. Yes, the nukes will destroy everything in that. Sort of smallish circle but a railgun will destroy everything along a relatively long line so if you line it up pro properly you can probably get through all of those um, spawners in one with one shot and maybe take out one or two of the worms as well so the railgun is an enormously effective weapon uh, the lightning gun is also pretty good so yeah I think the nukes whilst, whilst they're fun and spectacular I don't think they're actually that great in it, it once now we've got to sort of this this level this a, a era of factorio enemies and weapons and things so, um, yeah, nukes, not all that great. You heard it here first. <laughs> right, let's move a bit further out into the solar system. Finally, we're going to head over to Njord. And this is Tristan's planet, where he's been digging up all of the Holmium. What's he been up to out here? So the first thing he's done is put in limits down here. And these are, these are to stop the um, stop the Holmanite powder flowing down to the machines down here that don't use the Pyroflux recipe. And uh, as long as there is... What, what's the rule? What, what rule are they working on? Um... 
don't let it through and let if and let, no let it through if there's more than 48 and that's sort of there and there right okay so i think it's watch yes it's watching all of these belts so if all of the belts across here are full so the the holmium powder has backed up this far like this on all of them then it'll start to let it through but if it hasn't if there's if there's any sort of shortage of it then it won't let the, then it won't let the powder run through further down and therefore the more efficient machines will uh, will use it first there's also blockages at the top i guess that's what, what, what are these doing? Oh, these these are also these are doing the same sort of thing. They're not letting the, the powder through until all of the belts across the top here are full. So at the moment, this one isn't full. This is the this is the slow poke. So each time this one fills up, it'll allow a bit to dribble through until until this one is no longer full. Um, oh, and this one is the slow poke because he's waiting for the for the uh, powder powder to get all. No, the what are you? You're crush? I, I I have no idea about Holmium. Holmium. I haven't been doing this one. Uh, he's waiting. He's waiting for. Oh, he's waiting for the Holmium chloride to get far enough to get to um, to fill up. Basically, fill up everything all the way along here. So, um, again, it's it's latency rather than throughput. So in the long run, it doesn't actually matter exactly how this works. Over here, he's got a um, a machine that's going to be collecting any any spare uh, vulcanite that can come over from Agnea and then turning that with the, with the sand here into pyroflux in order to fill this tank up. And he's got a decent amount of it at the moment. He's got half a tank almost, so you know that's some. And that'll allow that'll allow these furnaces to run, and um, and maybe maybe it'll keep up. Who knows? He's also started on a new Holmium production design off to the southwest, which I think must be what this is. This is this is this is this is this is a large system. I think is probably the best way to put this. It's a very very large system. So what's go what's going on here? Let's have a look. Okay, so this is simply taking in the right. So he's going to have four belts of um, Holmium core fragments coming in here. And this is presumably the right number of machines. Tristan, you haven't put any modules in these. I hope you've thought about modules because this is this is a step where you certainly should have modules in there. So we'd like to productivity all of these and then put beacons in next to them to bring the speed back up again. But this will deal with all yeah, this will deal with four belts of that on the way in, and then there's a filtering system on the way out to make sure we're getting rid of the stone in one direction, the the um, the core chunks in another, and then the actual holmium itself will go off to the next step, and then the next step and the next step and the next step, and so on. So this is this is, as you can see from the map quite a bit bigger so at the moment that that was his pulverizers for, to start with and he's now got well it was probably about that much so he's now got, he, i reckon he's quadrupled it down here so assuming he's going to keep this one running as well this is five going to be five times as much so that's going to be really good because there doesn't seem to be an enormous amount of holmium if we look over here on these belts they're all the at the output belt is not backing up at all and <clears throat> we're not really getting through all that much holmium anywhere we've got one shooting at uh, norbit and one shooting at, at nowhere um and even the one going to nowhere doesn't appear to be full. What's going on? Oh no, that's prioritised for this one. So yeah, we're feeding it out to Norbit. This is very, very gradually filling up, but it's it it it's a slow process. So yeah, he need, he, need, he needs to increase the rate this is coming through at, and and, he, and and that's why he's got that new assembly system being being put in. Um, now, as, as as usual with this sort of thing, I suspect it's the powder stage that is causing or causing issues because that always seems to be, seems to be the, the case. Well, he's got no, he's making the crushed here, and then oh, I don't know. None of these belts seem to be full, um, but then perhaps oh, right, it's the number of it's the number of the core chunks coming in is in, one belt is insufficient. They're all being pulverized, and that's making a sort of a, a smattering down here rather than rather than the, sort of the huge amount you'd hope for. And then and then then the shortages are just propagating through the whole system. So yeah, I think lots and lots of modules, 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 and uh, and maybe some beacons in here to get this thing up and running at a, a, a suitably high speed. Uh, he's also put got attacked by Lawrence on his list. <laughs> That's because I had my, my sand cannon that was firing from Agnea. I, I put it onto automatic for a little while just to get rid of a bit of a backlog. Um, and I wasn't really keeping an eye on it. And then suddenly there was a, a, a big alert that lots of things were being damaged. And it's because this this delivery cannon chest filled up completely. <laughs> so the next delivery cannon uh, capsule that arrived just damaged all the stuff around it. Um, and then another one arrived. And then I then I very, very quickly turned it off so it would stop stop pummeling his base. So um, sorry about that. It was a, a genuine accident, I, 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 I assure you. Uh, he says he's up to 11 core mines now. So this is... Well, that's, that's, that, that's a lot of expansion and a lot of missing... Uh, signals um, so yep he's got apparently 11 core mines I'm not going to count them um, but he's in another five planned so he's yeah he's taking he's expanding that out quite nicely just sort of pushing out across the planet and this is an, a fiddly planet to build on because it's so swampy there's so much water to worry about you but um, but then the, the, he, he 
he knew about that before he went, so he's taken quite a lot of landfill with him. So as long as you stick to mostly to the to the sort of the, the swampy landy-ish areas, it's not going to be too bad. And he has done, as you can see. So that means his train is working quite hard, bringing all the core chunks back over to him. Maybe it's two two trains bringing them in. I'm, I, I don't know. Uh, bringing them over to this core drop station here and unloading merrily, or maybe three trains. Uh, so he's got a nice supply of the core chunks going in. Uh, the problem is it's limited. It's throttled by the fact there's a single blue belt going around here, and that just doesn't seem to be enough. It, with Holmium, it, this is crazy. I mean, it looks like he's you, getting through enormous quantities of um, of the Holmium core fragments, and it's a, such a small dribble of um, of Holmium ingots coming out at the other end. I mean that that is literally a full blue belt coming in at one end, and then almost none coming out the other end. Let's look at the product production uh, stats. So if we look up Holmium. Uh, you can see we've got, uh, that's Holman Knight, I guess, but uh, sure, whatever. We've got um, none, basically. Here we go. 152 per hour, or two and a half per minute, of the ingots being finished in exchange for 74,000 or 1.2 thousand per minute of the, of the ore going in. So this is absolutely horrific. Um, it's dropping down from 1.2 thousand to, to two and a half. Um, I, yeah, that's that's an incredible drop. Um, I guess, well, um, the only real answer for this is to put in lots and lots of productivity modules and hope that just brings the numbers up a little bit. Uh, one of the other things he's mentioned is that he has more pro more uh, delivery cannon capsules than he knows what to do with. This whole system is very, very full. Um, so, yeah, going in and whacking everything full of productivity modules in here isn't gonna, is not going to cause any problems um, with, with the, without, without putting it. Whereas with Vulcanite, it might do, because the Vulcanite, is, it, the Vulcanite being produced from the core mining system is only just producing, it's only producing ever so slightly more um, core ch uh, delivery cannons than are required to ship the Vulcanite onwards. So, over here, um, whereas over here, he's producing far, far more than he needs, so th there's not a worry there. He can he can he can put in them lots and lots of productivity modules, boost the output of all these stages, and it'll be absolutely fine. So yes, this new system down here definitely need definitely needs to be pumped full of productivity modules and then speed modules to keep this get the speed back up to an acceptable level. He's also started digging up Immersite, which is nice. Uh, that's this is now all being shipped over to um, uh, um, where is it Tashikuten, where we where we're processing it, and that's why we've been able to do all that. Um, uh, all that research with the uh, we've been able to make so many optimization tech cards and start start doing that those those levels of researches so that's been quite good <laughs> he has said that, that was using up the capsules faster than he um it, faster than he was making them so he's now put in a limiting factor up here so the is he watching all of these i i, I don't know basically he's going to basically gonna see when this when this when this bit fills up up here um it, it'll start shipping the emissite again gradually at the rate to make the uh, delivery cannon capsules out so yeah i mean It'll work. It just, it's just going to take a little while to back up again all the way up to here. I think that's going to be everything I have to tell you about um, about what's been going on on the on the uh, on the other planets out here. And it's about time too, because this episode has gone on um, re uh, for a reasonably long time. So things are going. Things are going. Um, we're. I'd say things are actually going well. We've now, we've now got copper ingots re fairly recently. We've got a reasonably good supply of imasite happening. We've got a much better supply of vulcanite than we had before, even if I am still going to increase that a bit. We've got the iridium coming through. And so this is going to allow us to then push forward into the into the newer and better sciences. At some point, somebody's going to have to go off and get beryllium. Uh, that might be me based on the colour of it and the fact that I'm not doing a huge amount. Uh, Mark might go off and get um, the vitamilange as well. So we're going to need both of those at some point, but they're not, they're not really high priority at the moment but we are going to want them uh, but otherwise yes I think things are going well and um, because there wasn't a huge amount of combat going on in the last um, in the last stream or at least the the combat that was happening was mostly um, mark using the nuclear artillery we haven't had any more losses so again once again you can see the um, there's no no increase in the number in the number of deaths on the on the uh, counter here <laughs> and so there's not much more for me to say uh, I hope to see hope we'll see you on Monday for the stream when we shall be carrying on with all of this stuff and hopefully finishing off lots of the things I've been talking about because I feel like there are quite a few things in the nearly finished stages at the moment so we, I feel like the next stream might be quite, uh, quite an exciting one of getting getting stuff actually flowing properly and maybe even starting to think about new science facts maybe uh, I wouldn't like to promise that because there's still quite a way to go with some of those um, but we are definitely making progress in the right direction 
Tuesday there will be a Factorio Flavors video for um, anyone anyone who isn't a channel supporter because it's the one that the supporters saw last week. Uh, there may well be another one for supporters. We'll see what I have time for. But there are there are some videos I want to make, but you know it's the it's the it's the, it's the finding time to do it. That's the struggle. Uh, Wednesday, oh, and no, no, actually also on Tuesday, but next week's going to be slightly funny. Now on Tuesday there is going to be the um, the XCOM stream uh, this uh, this week because something has come up in in life as as, as some happens from time to time. Um, and so Wednesday there won't actually be anything, but on Thursday there will should be a GTA video and uh, and a fresh one for supporters. Friday, Saturday, as usual, there will be these uh, these update videos. So yes, it's a busy old week, lots and lots going on on the channel. So please make sure you're subscribed. Drop in us a uh, drop in as a supporter as well if you want to, if you want to help support the channel and um, give me a bit more uh, and get early access to videos, access to the, um, the the supporter server where you can play along in the same universe as we're in, and also you know to support the channel and help me. Um, make more videos and become and fulfill my dreams of becoming a full-time youtuber and all that sort of shenaniganery finally please check out the uh, channel sponsor that's treefoil.be they will host a factorio server for you or a minecraft server or a handful of other games as well at a very reasonable cost and uh, if you use the code lawrence plays on checkout you'll get 20 percent off your first month as well so as ever thank you very much for watching i hope to see you in all the rest of the stuff that happens on the channel this week and uh yeah i'll see you there bye bye